Well, welcome to Tea and Talk. My name is Leslie Thompson. I am Director of Adult Programs at the Sid Richardson Museum. Um, and before we get into our discussion, um, I wanna start with a land acknowledgement, um, which pays tribute to the original inhabitants of the land that we're on. So we, the Sid Richardson Museum, respectfully acknowledge all Native American peoples who've lived on this land since time immemorial. And the Sid would especially like to uh, acknowledge and pay respect to the Wichita and affiliated tribes upon whose historical homeland our museum is located. So today, in addition to members of the Sid Richardson Museum staff, we have a special guest with us. So I am going to go around and introduce each one of them. Um, so first I've got Shelby Orr. Hello, hi. <laughs> she is our director of school and family programs. Then I've got Scott Winterode. Hello, everybody. He is our director of the Sid Richardson Museum. I've got Janie Cumming. Hi. She is uh, our visitor services manager. Then I've got Betsy Thomas. Hello, everyone. She is our director of education resources. Then I've got Maggie Adler. Hi. She is our special guest today. She is our cura uh, the curator of painting, sculpture, and works on paper at the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art here in Fort Worth. And then finally, I've got Renee Green. Good morning. Who is our admin assistant at the Sid Richardson Museum. Um, so to quickly review for those who might not be familiar with our Tea and Talk program, this is something that we um, offer, we host at the museum um, that really provides an opportunity to slow down the art viewing process. Um, studies have shown that the average visitor spends 10, maybe 15 seconds, uh, if you're lucky, with one work of art. And that really just is not a lot of time to take in all of the details um, that an artwork has to offer. So our Teen Talk program provides that opportunity to slow down and really take in um, more of what you're seeing, kind of a visual deep dive, if you will. Um, now, normally our in-person program allows for about half an hour, um, but for the virtual experience today, we're gonna keep it down to 10 minutes. And um, we have on the screen here an image of the painting we'll be talking about today. Um, and I want to point out that this is a painting that is not from our collection. Um, this is actually a painting we have on loan from the Denver Art Museum. And it is part of a special exhibit that we have here at the CID um, called In a Different Light, Winslow Homer and Frederick Remington. Um, and although our museum is temporarily closed, you can actually view this painting along with the rest of the artworks in the exhibit and our current installation of our collection through a 360 degree virtual tour experience um, that you can find on our website and also link to it um, in the description for this video as well. So you can check that out. Um, so today we're actually uh, moving outside of our collection and looking at a Winslow Homer painting um, so that's a, a real treat. And um, I'm going to refrain from sharing more information like title and date until after our conversation, just so that we can really focus on the painting and not um, influence um, our looking in any way. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and set my timer. Um, so as we are looking at this painting, y'all, if you want to share something that you notice about this painting. I'm always fascinated by works of art that um, show me something that can't otherwise be seen. Or um, so what draws me into this is this notion of like being able to see a representation of the weather. Um, so you've got um, the scarf, the red scarf blowing in the wind. You, you can feel the wind. <laughs> Your red scarf blowing in the wind, the apron or part of her skirt blowing in the wind, um, that kind of notion that the sea is angry. <laughs> um, and I think that's so, so fascinating. Uh, you know, one of the works in our collection that um, does that is, is, is um, Sheeler trying to show, represent electricity. Well, how do you show electricity? Um, so I like, I, I'm really compelled by feeling like I'm on this cold blustery beach. 
because yeah. it's cold out today in Fort Worth. <laughs> right, yeah, this painting um, is really appropriate for our weather today in Fort Worth. It's very cloudy and dreary uh, here as well. But yeah, so I like that Maggie's picking up on the, the kind of um, tactile quality, the sensation of the wind, um, and you can see evidence of that um, in their clothing there um, in these figures. And also the way they're leaning into the wind too. Like it looks like they're, it takes a little bit of struggle to, to walk along that beach, but they're also look like they're kind of doing it effortless, effortlessly, excuse me, I'm having some trouble today. Um, so, I mean, these uh, women are native to the area it looks like, and it's just kind of their day to day. That's yeah. like it from it at least, very normal. Yeah. That you can notice that they they look like they're they're leaning into a little bit, but they obviously they know how to handle this weather. What else do you notice? I okay. notice. Sorry, that's good. Um, I'll I'll start, and Scott, I'll let you because you're more knowledgeable in this area. Um, the thing that really strikes me is that this painting to to someone that is untrained like myself, uh, I, it looks like there were only four, maybe five colors used in this painting, um, which is just amazing. And so um, I know, as I said, I know Scott knows a lot more about that than me, um, so. <laughs> Actually, that's what I was about to talk about was the limited palette. I mean, I think it's really fascinating to see um, just um, how really integrated the figures are because the color of the figures matches the color of that foreground um, rocky landscape that you see there. And then even the, the blues that they're wearing are in those grays that are in the sky. So there's this limitation, but there's also this very um, kind of um, embedding the figures in their landscape, um, kind of matching them with their surroundings. And um, I was looking at this painting yesterday and I'm always just struck by the fact that the the, the legs and the feet of the figures seem to almost just dissolve into the ground as you're looking at it. There's something very bizarre and it's a it's kind of a crudely painted area. It's very rough and not very fleshed out and it just kind of melds together again, making them to me grounded in that landscape and very much a part of it. I think what's interesting is though, if you took your hand and you blocked out the figures, you have a very interesting banded abstract uh, painting that looks super modern. Um, you know, it's almost uh, Rothko-y. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is, that's fascinating you say that because we have it paired with some Remingtons that I always think are very Rothko-y when you look at them um, in the galleries uh, because they're, they're just these bands of orange and blue, you know. <clears throat> So we're noticing a very limited palette. Um, and I'm, I'm noticing too, when I look at the colors, especially, uh, well, I guess the whole composition really, but the sky and the water, especially like how that paint is applied. Um, you can really see evidence of that. Um, it's not just a, a flat uh, sky. Like I can, I can see, um, man, I, can, I feel like I can almost see every point at which he put a brush down. Mm -hmm. It's interesting as I'm looking at it today, I'm, I'm noticing more that it, it seems very flat, like we're talking about, we see those bands, and but when we look at it, we're looking at them on a rocky kind of shelf, and then that's dropping off to where we see the waves coming along the beach, and then there's those rocks in the distance. So it's, it's, it's a kind of an interesting tension between um, this kind of flattened experience and also a spatial experience. Yeah. I get then drawn in by the white spray in the in the foreground and to me it's like it's almost like when the water crashes against rock and uh, in nature and you get that effect of spray and here he's done it with paint. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like the the way he's applied the paint is an echo of the thing that he is painting. Yeah. Yeah. I also I like the fact that you can see the you can see the weather, especially off to in the left uh, upper corner. You can actually see the the rain and um, the clouds and what it's doing, and it's just that's fascinating to me because 
you know, I've actually seen that before um, in real life. And the fact that he was able to paint the weather, because um, I don't know what else to call it, is just amazing to me. Betsy, were you gonna say something? Oh, I was just gonna say, um, it's kind of hard to visually represent that um, sort of spray of water that Maggie was talking about in the uh, foreground, the lower left. Um, so it's just kind of interesting to, to see it in paint. Yeah. Another um, thing I'm noticing is um, just how anonymous the figures feel um, because they do have their backs to us. And although it seems like we could maybe see like a profile of the woman on the right, um, of course, there's no defining features. Um, it's really just patches of color. I'm always intrigued by that little shape in the in the far distance that's beyond that rock that's just to the right of them. Do you see that mm -hmm. weird little mm -hmm. form? And I, I always want to know whether or not he's trying to imply that there's a ship out there or something. Because in some of the other works that I, the artist has created, you can actually see a ship in the distance. But in this one, it's not clear. And I wonder what that is because it, it, it has a definition, you know what I mean? There's something there. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if there was land back there or like you said, a ship. Because there's a slightly darker gray area that kind of goes across. Yes, yeah, so we're noticing. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, what Betsy and Scott are noticing is, of course, there's like this little whoosh of uh, faint color, yeah, above that rock to the right of the figures. But then there's also darker gray um, above the whole horizon line as well. Um, and whether or not, the question is, is that intended to be land um, out in the distance? Uh, or is that just, or is that just paint? <laughs> And if, if we were in the galleries, we would be able to step back and forth. And I think that play that Scott is talking about um, would be so much more effective. I'm trying to do it with my laptop, but it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't quite work the same way. But, you know, whether we would see as much of that gray band as we're seeing now on the screen, I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. And this, I mean, this kind of brings back to the point of why it's so important to see artwork in person when you can. Um, because it is such a different experience than looking at it on a screen here. So can we go back to the spray for just a moment? Um, I, I assumed that that was spray. So this, this rocky, whatever they're walking on, do we, um, and do you think this is implying that it sort of jets out and then, um, in the foreground, what we can't see is also ocean that is coming up on this side of this rocky outcrop that's also coming across this piece of, of land. What, are, what do y'all think? What is your impression of that? I think it's interesting because Scott was implying that he sees it as them being high up above the water and then looking down, whereas I'm seeing them in like in a rocky outcropping that's level with the water. So um, I think that's kind of fascinating. So that it's like um, a jetty where there's water in front and water behind. Um, so that's the way I read it. Cause the, the way he's painted the water and foam um, in front of the women is the paint looks like it's on top of the, um, the rocky outcrop. <laughs> No, I, I, I don't disagree. It just suddenly I had the feeling of this distance that I hadn't really noticed before because I was focused more on those rocks in the middle ground um, in, yeah. the, in the foam. But, um, you know, I read that stuff on the, on the rocks in the foreground as that nasty, foamy, leftover stuff after the water's run back out, you know? Um, when you're up, I, I mean, in, in San Diego, it, you, you're on the rocks and it's, it's further down below you, but whenever that, the waves hit the bottom of those rocks, everything comes up over and then it, it, it lingers on the top of the rocks and looks kind of gross. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but it's funny because when you said um, you could see the water down below and they're on a, like a cliff edge, I thought, yeah, that's, that, I see that too. <laughs> 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 yeah. So um, yeah, I, I think that's part of the fun of it. To yeah. me, well, it looks like it's higher on to the right of the painting if you're facing it. Um, and it's up higher and then 
it feels like it goes down in the in the left um maybe the water could sort of flow over it it's it's interesting though <laughs> but that's amazing how much like depth and definition you can get by being very minimal with your definition i mean we're we're reading all sorts of things and like les or like you said it was just it's just blocks of color it's really incredible it is. yeah I like, I like this debate we're having and how there's so many different perspectives um, from such a, what seems like such a simple uh, seascape. Um, so, uh, but we've actually, I mean, I wish we could continue the debate. Well, we've actually gone over our time. <laughs> we're already about 12 minutes in, uh, which goes to show you how quickly time flies when you're actually like looking um, intently at a painting. Um, and I, I, I want to share that this painting, so we mentioned it's a painting by Winslow Homer, um, and it's called Two Figures by the Sea from 1882, um, and it's from a period uh, in which he spent um, some time in a, a small fishing village um, off the coast of England called Color Coats, um, which really becomes a, a central focal point in a lot of his work um, later on in his career after spending time there. Um, and you can see more works like this, um, not only in our exhibit, but also in a, a larger exhibit um, that Maggie has co-curated um, that's called uh, Myth Makers, The Art of Winslow Homer and Frederick Remington. And you will be able to see that if you are here in Fort Worth um, at the Eamon Carter Museum um, starting December 22nd, and it will run through the end of February. Um, but for our discussion today, that kind of wraps things up for us. Um, I would, however, if you are watching this video, um, I would love to know what your perspective is on uh, where the figures are. Um, are they above sea? Are they at sea level? Um, how do you read this painting? Uh, we'd love to hear your comments below or any other observations you have as well. Um, we'd love to keep the conversation going. Um, but otherwise, thank you all for joining us for Tea and Talk today. I loved our discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.